Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. I don't know why I'm laughing. That wasn't even funny. Where Karens continue to mistake regular Joe Schmo customers as employees. And today, a rude Karen gets arrested after calling the wrong number multiple times and insists that OP is an employee. I hope you enjoy today's stories. And hey, try not to shake your heads too hard at these outrageous tales. So a few years ago, I was at a resort in the Dominican Republic. My parents are Dominican, so I speak pretty fluent Spanish. So I was by the pool chatting with one of the lifeguards when a Karen in her 30s taps me on the shoulder. She says, Excuse me, I need a Clino Towelo? While staring at me holding a soaked towel. I tell her, I'm sorry, I don't work here, you might wanna... She then cuts me off and says, Yes you do, I just saw you speaking Spanish. To which I say, so what? I'm also speaking perfect English. She then says, well, if you're working with tourists, you should speak English. Now, at this point, I'm trying not to seem rude, so I point her to the towel station, and she says, can't you grab me one? I don't speak Spanish. I tell her, no, 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 you can figure that out. Karen then walks away angry, and me, thinking that was the end of it, I head to the bar. I was able to overhear her screaming at a real employee that she needs someone who speaks English in this place, because she has a complaint about one of the employees. So the employee takes her to the front desk to speak with the manager. 20 minutes later, I see the same employee return to his post, and I asked him what happened. The employee tells me that the crazy lady started screaming in English, so they took her to the manager and she wanted to get someone fired, but nobody knew who she was talking about. I laughed and told him that that was probably me. He laughed and said, Probably. These tourists are crazy. Guys, I know, I've read so many stories where tourist Karens cause trouble in other countries. But man, every time I read a story where a Karen visits a foreign country and expects everyone to speak English just baffles me. And the fact that she just adds O oh to the end of words, thinking that it somehow makes the word Spanish. Oh, that was super cringe. Excuse me, I need a Clino Towelo? <laughs> like, holy crap, right? Okay, so quick background. I'm a 6 foot 3 guy, and I'm often asked to get things off the shelf in stores, which I'm more than happy to help, usually. So on this day, I was walking through a store, and as I turn to go down the hallway to the toilet, I hear, Sir? Sir? Now normally, I would have at least engaged the person and tried to help out, but this was a bit of an emergency. The woman follows me into the men's room, and as I'm going into the stall, she starts yelling at me, asking me why I'm not acknowledging her. She then tells me that she needs help, and she needs it right now. She starts telling me that she needs me to get so-and-so product here from the top shelf. I then point out that I don't work there, and she says she knows that. But I'm tall, and she's in a hurry, and there's no staff nearby, so I have to come do it. Now at this, I tell her that I'm in a bit of a hurry too. Look where you are, ma'am. Now that didn't phase her in the least. She starts screaming at me about how rude I'm being for not helping her, and she actually expected me to follow her back out before I did my business. So I just closed and locked the stall door and proceeded as planned. If she's not embarrassed by it, then why should I be? The woman stood there for another full minute before she screams, F you, as she storms out the door. Now I had a smartphone and nowhere to be, so even though I didn't want to, I spent the next 20 minutes in there. I couldn't decide whether to be happy or disappointed that she was gone when I got out. Guys, I love how that woman calls OP rude when she literally followed him into the men's room and expected him to help her before he got to do his business. Like, some people are just too gosh darn crazy, guys. And I love this person's comment right here. This person says, I would have followed her to where she wanted help, grabbed the item, and put it up even higher on the shelf before walking away. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. So on this day, I was in a local home improvement store picking up some welding equipment. I grabbed 5 pounds of the electrodes I need to practice running for school. While I'm grabbing them, a lady asked me if I could help her find a hood and a few types of electrodes for her husband, who's just getting into welding. Now I like helping people when it's something I'm knowledgeable about, so I help her by showing her the types I learned on when I first learned that type of welding. She thanks me and walks away, and I grab the electrodes and head towards the register. Now keep in mind, I'm in jeans and a black leather jacket, so there's no way that it resembles the store uniform which was a red vest with the company name on it. So as I'm walking, out of nowhere, this lady pulls my jacket sleeve as I walk by, and she didn't lightly tug it either. 
Now, I don't like to be touched by people who don't know me, just like any person, retail worker or not. So I turn on my heels, and I'm about to confront the person who just forcefully grabbed my brand new leather jacket. It's an older lady, who immediately looks like she has a stick up her butt. She asks me if I know if they have any trailer hitches in the back. I tell her that I don't work here, and she says, You just helped that lady get some things in the other aisle, so help me. I tell her I did, but I don't work here, I just came here for these. And I showed her the five pound container of electrodes. The woman wasn't listening, she says, but you helped the other lady, so why can't you go and get a trailer hitch from the back? At this point, the woman then tries to grab me again, and I step away as she starts to come unglued. She starts screaming profanities at me and screaming stuff like, Get back here, you son of a bitch. And, When is it okay to help one customer and blow another one off? You should be fired. I'm walking towards the registers, so I immediately turn around and ask, When is it okay to commit battery on a miner just because he doesn't work at a store? There's never a line in the front, so I immediately tell the guy at the register what happened. In a matter of seconds after I stop talking to him, she marches over red in the face. She then goes to him and tells him how much of a horrible employee I am and how I need to be fired. He then tells her, Ma'am, he doesn't work here. You have 30 seconds to leave the store or we're gonna call police. At this point, it finally clicks in her head that she effed up. She sighs loudly and leaves without another word. The guy at the register was very apologetic, and he offered to cover the charge of the electrodes, $30 including tax, which I declined and paid for it. You know what, no matter how many of these stories I read, it continues to blow my mind how many people just go around grabbing random strangers. And the Karen in this next story hopefully learns her lesson. So I'm in the military. I've been stationed in quite a few different places around the US and the world. Because of that, I have a cell phone number that's out of the area, and use it for just about everything. Between that and the occasional work-issued phone, I've never felt the need to have a dedicated landline. However, with my most recent residence, the company I get my internet and cable through had a plan set up, where every service came individually, or you could get a bundled box that had cable, internet, and phone. However, there was no cable slash internet only option. Since the phone included bundle was cheaper than a la carte, I said, hell with it, I might as well. I even went ahead and got a cheapo phone and plugged it in. That was my first mistake. Now apparently, this phone number was one number different from a local Domino's pizza place. Now, fortunately, I didn't have the problem we often see here, where the pizza place would put my number in a commercial, causing hundreds of calls a day. But I did have one person who managed to call me a few times. And yes, she called me more than once instead of calling the pizza place. I can only guess that she tried to program it into a contact entry and only ever went back to the contact each time, rather than dialing it outright. The first time the phone rang, I of course picked it up. I was curious as to who would be trying to call me on a number that I hadn't actually given to anyone. Now that was my second mistake. The conversation should have been simple. It should have been, sorry, you have the wrong phone number. Oh, my bad. Click. Now if only it were that easy. Given that I'm here now posting the story, we all know that's not what happened. So the first call went something like this. I picked up and said, Hello? Karen says, That's no way to answer the phone for a restaurant. You should identify yourself and the company when you pick up. To which I say, This isn't a restaurant. This is my home line. She then says, I'm in no mood for jokes. Now take my order. It's before she could rattle off her order, I hung up. Now immediately, she calls me back, and I answer, and she says, Are you serious? I told you, I'm in no mood for pranks or jokes today. What the heck is wrong with you? Now in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, really now? If you're gonna act like that, then I'll entertain it. Mentally cracking my thought knuckles, I engaged. Affecting a heavy twang, I said, This is Hank's Roadkill Cafe. You kill it, we grill it. This is Hank Jr. speaking. How may I help you? Now after I said that, there was a few seconds of silence, and then Karen goes on and says, What on earth are you talking about? I just want to order some pizza. I then say to her, Now that's gonna be a bit of an issue, hun, seeing as how there ain't no pizzas running across the road for you to hit. How we gonna grill up a dead pizza when there ain't no such thing? Karen then gets really angry and she says, This is extremely unprofessional. Let me speak to your manager. I then start screaming in the phone saying, Hank, hey Hank, get your ass over here. Then I hung up, thinking that would be the end of it. Surely no one would think that performance was a valid phone number for a pizza place. And that was my third mistake. About five minutes later, Karen calls back, and recognizing her number, I geared up for round number two. 
So call three went something like this. I picked up and said, Alfredo's Pizza Cafe, this is Mike, how may I help you? To which Karen says, wait, I thought this was Domino's. I tell her, no, this location used to be Domino's, but it was bought by Alfredo. Our prices are a bit more expensive, but what would you rather have? A medium amount of good pizza or all you can eat of pretty good pizza? Now what can I say? I'm a die-hard Office fan. Karen then says, listen, I'll tell you what I want to order, so stop trying to upsell me on things I don't need. She then proceeds to launch into a rather lengthy delivery order with more than a few details, none of which I wrote down as I gave uh uh-huh and gotchas throughout. I then say, okay, I've rung that all up, and fortunately for you, we're running a special, half off of any order up to 8 pizzas. So the total comes out to $63.50. To which Karen screams, what? That is so much more expensive than Domino's. And that's half off? I say to her, yes ma'am, but it's the best pizza in the city, according to the Scranton Times. She then says, whatever, just get here ASAP. She then yells her address at me, hung up without even letting me try to confirm. So two hours later, the number pops up on my phone again. I mentally prepared myself for yet another round in the ring, with this mental lightweight. So call number four goes something like this. I pick up and say, Alfredo's Pizza Cafe, this is... And before I could finish speaking, Karen starts screaming at me saying, Where the F is my pizza? I then tell her, Oh dear, I'm so sorry, but our delivery driver wasn't able to make it to you. So while he was out on the run delivering at another address, he was held hostage by a strange group of people in a small business park who were having an after-hours office party. By the time he was let go and got back to his car, your pizza was cold, and he was terribly traumatized, so we gave him the rest of the night off. Also, this was never a restaurant number, like I said from the very start. Karen starts screaming and says, What do you mean it's not a restaurant? You said you were, and you took my order. I tell her, yeah, about that, I lied. I then cackled with fake maniacal laughter, which only served to enrage her even more. At this point, Karen was screaming so hard into the phone that I can only make out the word manager a couple of times. So I tell her, listen lady, this isn't a pizza place, it's a home number, and I'm done with you. I then hung up, disconnected the phone from the box. My cable system would pop up a notice anytime someone called the line if you were watching TV, and I at least got a dozen more calls from her that night, plus two more the following night. After that, it stopped. So fast forward two weeks. The wife and I were in the mood for some pizza, so I suggested picking up from Domino's. In the intervening weeks, I had done some searching online, and found the Domino's with the one number difference that was the partial cause of that fun-filled evening. And it seemed like a great place to get dinner for the night. So I called the order in as I left for work, and I stopped by to pick it up on my way home. As I was at the register, waiting for it to finish in the oven, I recounted the story of what happened to the cashier, and she was floored. The look on her face was priceless. She explained to me that Karen had come into their location like a bat out of hell, looking to cause all sorts of crap, thinking they were the ones who had done this to her. She refused to listen to anyone explain, and they had no idea what she was talking about, not even the manager. Eventually, she was arrested by police and served with a trespass order. Fortunately, I haven't received any subsequent calls from Karen. All told, it was well worth the time I spent on the phone with her. Oh my freaking goodness, guys. Karen got trolled so hard that night that it led to her being arrested over some pizza. But hey, like OP said, it should have been, Oh, this isn't a pizza place? I'm sorry, let me figure out the right number. But silly Karen was way too stubborn. I'm at a very large warehouse of a ski shop getting my boots fitted. This involves some measuring and work to stretch and shape the boot to your foot, so it takes about 30 to 40 minutes. I had been measured and I was roaming around the giant racks of gear, waiting and looking at the shiny expensive stuff I don't need. I'm snapping a friend, so I stop and look down. When I look back up, an older, maybe 50 year old-ish, PTA all-star of a woman is directly in my path, complete with a local middle school track team shirt. She asked, Hey, I can't find the right helmet, my son needs one. Where are they? Now I'm a male with long hair and I'm wearing a bucket hat with a weed leaf pin and a ski brand t-shirt. I get how there might be some confusion. And she wasn't rude at all, so I say, I'm sorry, I actually don't work here. She says, really? I knew it. Me, now feeling awkward, say, oh? She says, that you were too busy playing on that phone to help me, and now you're lying to a regular customer just to avoid responsibility? Before I could say anything else, she says, forget it, I'm finding your manager. 
I tried to tell her, no, really, I don't work here. So while I was a bit annoyed, I just wanted the situation to be over and save both of us and the store some trouble. She says, you are wearing a ski brand shirt. They only give those to employees. Now where are the extra large helmets? At this point, I do get a little snarky and say, nah, I'm just chilling right here. Good luck finding them. And awkwardly get back on my phone to try to act cool. The Karen then paces around, literally huffing, composing her next thought. She then says to me, I've bought him a board, jacket pants, and everything here. More than you make in a month. And you treat me like this and you lie to me? It's up to your manager if you keep this job, but I'm telling him that I'm not coming back if you do. The woman then leaves towards the front checkout area. I decide to seek Haven back in the boot fitting area across the store. I sit down in a comfy waiting chair and find out 15 more minutes until my boots are done and hope that it's all over. I'm near a gruff older man doing ski repair so I figure I might be safe. But I'm wrong. Out of nowhere, I hear, there he is, sitting on his ass instead of helping me. Why would you hire someone so useless? She had dragged a manager around until she found me. He then says to her, he doesn't work here, he's a customer, sorry about that. To which Karen says, he could have found you and fixed this whole mess. I want him removed. The manager says nothing and just looks like a deer in headlights. He then asked if I'd apologize to her since that's what she told him she wanted. I reply, no thanks, I'm good. I don't owe her anything. I'm a semi-regular customer too. And I know my boots on their own are probably worth more than her son's starter board and jacket and whatever else she bought combined. I'm pissed enough now that I'm down to roll the dice. Service guy knows this too. He yanks the manager aside and whispers something. The manager then asks her to come with him to the back office to sort it out. She then glares, but probably hopes that she's about to file some report on me, and finally they're gone. It turns out the service guy is actually one of the owners, and she's known for causing trouble, but she justifies it by making expensive purchases. According to her, after this, he'll ask her to not come back, since harassing customers is a new level. I got my boots back, didn't see her again, and ended up getting some free swag for putting up with her. Years ago as a teen, I worked at a pet store that had dark forest green polos for the uniform. The grocery store across from my apartment complex also had dark forest green polos for the uniforms. As that's where I shopped, I got a lot of people asking me for help. To be fair, while our logo was huge across our backs, it was tiny on the fronts, so I often got approached from the front or side by people asking for assistance. I knew the store pretty well, so most of the time I would just point them in the right direction or help them get an item off a high shelf. My previous job had been at a different grocery store, so I would even occasionally help bag groceries for people if the line was too long and I was impatient. Anyway, one day, I was only buying a soda, and an older lady had a cart full in front of me. This was way before self-checkouts, and no express lines were open. So I put my soda on that little pull-out thing the registers have, and start bagging this woman's 100 plus items. I chit-chatted with both the cashier and the lady for a bit while I worked. Finally, I got everything in her cart and asked if she needed help out. She said no, her husband was waiting outside and he would help her load it. I told her to have a great day. At this point, a woman walks up in a store uniform. She smiles at me as the cashier starts to ring me up. She says, hi, I'm Mary, that was some really good customer service. I say to her, oh, thanks. Now I don't think too much of it as the cashier tells me my total. I just pull out my wallet to pay. She then says to me, you're off work? I say to her, oh, yeah, I'm just going home. The woman asks me what my name is, and I tell her. She says, that's fantastic. You're even helping customers after your shift has ended? Now hearing that, a light bulb slowly starts to come on in my head. She then says to me, I haven't gotten a chance to meet all of our employees yet, but if they're anything like you, this is going to be a great store to work at. It turns out Mary was a transferred supervisor from another store, and she was trying to meet all the employees. I laughed, but not in a mean way. I was just surprised. I then point to the small logo on my shirt and she starts to turn red. I then apologize for the confusion and told her that I don't mind helping out when I can. She then says to me, well, you're not by chance looking to change jobs, are you? Because I could really use people like you here. I declined as I liked my job and I was reasonably sure it paid better. But for the next year and a half until I moved and changed stores, anytime Mary saw me, she would always say hi and asked if I had changed my mind on her offer. Guys, I would love to work for a boss like that. Mary seems like she'll be a great supervisor. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today. I hope you didn't shake your heads too hard, and I hope you had a few laughs. 
If you guys missed the last episode on the channel, I'll link it right here. OP and his co-workers find a way to get back at their Karen boss, and it's such a funny story, so go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.